subscribe and hit the bell icon. The Sun Bear. Hi, everybody. My name is Leo. I am a junior ranger. And this is my puppy, Hero. Where are you? What is it, Hero? It's a bee. Careful, Hero. Keep a safe distance. The bee is collecting nectar from the flowers. Let's find out why. The bees collect the nectar and return to the beehive to make honey. What was that? It's a small bear. I wonder how it got here. You know what we should do? Let's take a photo and send it to my sister Katie. She is also a junior ranger. Now hold still, little bear. Hi, Katie. Did you find anything? You're just in time, Leo. The computer is almost done. This animal is a sun bear. It's also known as a honey bear because it loves to eat honey. So it was trying to steal honey from the beehive, but why is it called a sun bear? The name sun bear is because of the golden colored crescent shape on its chest. All sun bears have it. You can find sun bears in the tropical rainforests of Southeast Asia and other parts of Asia. So other than honey, what do sun bears eat? Sun bears eat both plants and small animals. They eat insects such as bees, termites, and ants, as well as small birds and lizards. They have big claws, which they use to rip open trees and termite nests. The sun bear you found is very young. Normally, sun bears stay with their mothers for three to four years. Well, I think we should help little sun bear find his mother back in the rainforest. Come and join us. That's a great idea, Leo. See you downstairs. For lots of fun and lots to learn One, two, off we go For lots of fun and lots to learn What's the matter, guys? Why did you stop? It seems like they don't want to go into that direction If we want to find the sun bear's mother We have to continue Let's go Oh What's that smell? Yuck, I smell it too. What is it, Hero? A flower? I think the smell is coming from this. This is a Rafflesia flower. They are one of the largest known flowers in the world. So why are there flies? The Rafflesia flower releases a bad smell to attract flies to spread its pollen. That's very interesting, Katie. But let's not stand too close to them. Quickly, let's go. The sun bear and hero tried to warn us. Both of them have a very strong sense of smell. Ah, uh, it still smells horribly here. Oh no, so many Rafflesia flowers. <gasps> 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 them. Their noses can help us find a way out. We better stay here, little sun bear. It's up to you now. We did it! We found the sun bear's mother! Great work, everyone! Hooray! a young sun bear in our garden.
We learned that a sun bear is the smallest of all bears, but they can be very dangerous. The young sun bear needed his mother, so we went to the forest and returned him home. Good job, children. You did it. You are amazing wildlife rangers. The Malayan Kalugo. Hi, everybody. My name is Leo. I am a junior ranger. And this is my puppy, Hero. I'm going to fold paper planes, Hero. There, a paper plane. Let's see if it can fly. That's okay, Hero. I'll just make another one. Let's make this paper plane fly further. Oh no, the paper plane hit a bird. Is it hurt? Hey, this isn't a bird. And I think it's unharmed. That's strange. This animal has a lot of skin around its body. You know what we should do? Let's take a photo and send it to my sister, Katie. She is also a junior ranger. Hi, Katie. So what did you find? You're just in time, Leo. The animal in our garden is a Malayan kalugo. It's also known as the Sunda flying lemur. But actually, it doesn't fly, it glides. The kalugo has a flap of skin that stretches from its neck to all of its four legs. It is called a patagium. Using its patagium, the kalugo can glide from tree to tree over long distances in the rainforest where it lives. It can glide over 100 meters without losing much height. Wow, that's so cool! The Malayan kalugo can be found in the rainforests of some Southeast Asian countries. They only feed on leaves, flowers, and fruits. By the way, the kalugo you found is still young. A young kalugo takes about two to three years to reach its full size and to glide on its own. It was probably learning how to fly when it collided with your paper plane. Normally, a mother kalugo will carry her young with her as she glides around the rainforest. Hmm, this young kalugo can't glide very well yet. We have to bring it back to the rainforest to find its mother. Come and join us. That's a great idea, Leo. See you downstairs. an open space with tall trees. Do you see any kalugos up in the trees, Katie? No, Leo, but I smell something burning. <laughs> what is it, Hero? <gasps> There's smoke over there. Oh no, it's a fire. We have to put it out before it spreads to the rest of the rainforest. <laughs> Kalugo! The fire must have frightened the Kalugo. It should be okay for now, Katie. First, let's take care of that fire. There are fire extinguishers in the Jeep. Let's get them. Hero, stay away from the fire. <laughs> oh no, the fire has grown. And the Kalugo is up in that burning tree. Come on, Katie. We have to put the fire out and save the Kaluko. But make sure you don't get too close to the fire. The Kaluko is trapped. It needs to jump and glide away from the tree. But the Kaluko is still too young. <laughs> You're right, Hero. We have to put more trust in the Kaluko. You can do it, Kaluko! to put out the fire. Now, we can continue our search for your mother.
We did it! We found the young Kalugo's mother! Great work, everyone! Hooray! Yay! We found a Malayan Kalugo in our garden! We also learned that Kalugos can glide through the air over long distances in open spaces in the rainforest. So we went to the rainforest and reunited the young Kaluga with its mother. Good job, children. You did it. You are amazing wildlife rangers. The Oriental Pied Hornbill. Hi, everybody. My name is Leo. I am a junior ranger. And this is my puppy, Hero. Hero, I'm picking apples for Mom so she can make an apple pie. Do you want to help me look for some ripe apples? <coughs> oh, here's a nice ripe apple. Ah, oh, this one's good too. <coughs> what is it, Hero? Is there something in that tree? Oh, it's just a lizard. <coughs> <gasps> that big bird is trying to catch the lizard. That bird has such a big beak. I wonder what kind of bird it is. You know what we should do? Let's take a photo and send it to my sister Katie. She is also a junior ranger. Look here, birdie. Hi, Katie. So what did you find? Hi, Leo. The bird you found is an oriental pied hornbill. There are many types of hornbills in the world. They can look very different from one another, but all of them have long beaks that curve downwards. Wow, look at all those big beaks. The hornbill in our garden tried to catch a lizard with its beak. Besides lizards, Oriental pied hornbills eat animals like frogs, small birds, and large insects. They also feed on wild fruits. By the way, oriental pied hornbills live in the rainforests of South and Southeast Asia. Hmm, we should take the oriental pied hornbill back to the rainforest, or it might eat all the fruit in our garden. Come and join us. That's a great idea, Leo. See you downstairs. Lots of fun and lots to learn. One, two, off we go for lots of fun and lots to learn. Oh no! Why have all these trees been cut down? These trees might have been cut down for wood. Wood is used to make furniture, paper, and many other things. Or maybe these trees have been cleared so houses can be built on the land. Sadly, many animals, including the Oriental Pied Hornbill, lose their homes when forests are destroyed. That's sad. We'd better drive deeper into the forest. Hopefully the trees aren't cut there. What's that sound? Leo, stop. Look, there are people cutting down trees. <laughs> oh no, that tree's gonna fall on us. Phew, that was close. Did you hear that, Leo? I hear it too. Hornbill, where are you going? Sit tight, we're going after it. Maybe it's trying to find its way home. I can't see it anymore. There it is. There you are, Mr. Hornbill. Don't worry, we'll help you find your home. Look, Leo. The Hornbill is collecting some figs for its mate and chicks. I can hear the baby Hornbills. We did it. We found the Oriental Pied Hornbill's nest. Great job, everybody! Yay! Hooray! an oriental
Oriental Pied Hornbill in our garden. We learned that Oriental Pied Hornbills seal their nests with mud and that the male hornbill brings food to its mate and the chicks. So we went to the rainforest and helped the hornbill find its nest. Good job, children. You did it. You are amazing wildlife rangers. The Sunda Slow Loris. Hi, everybody. My name is Leo. I am a junior ranger, and this is my puppy, Hero. Hey, what's that sound? Oh, it's a truck. The driver must be in a hurry. What is it, Hero? It's an animal. Don't be afraid. We won't hurt you. Oh, the cage is locked. I'm sorry, animal. I can't open it. You know what we should do? Let's take a photo and send it to my sister, Katie. She is also a junior ranger. Over here. Find anything, Katie? Yes, I did, Leo. The animal you found is a Sunda slow loris. A slow loris will freeze and cover its face when it feels it's in danger. This position allows it to lick its elbows, which will give the slow loris a toxic bite. This bite is painful and can make you very sick. I can't believe the slow loris has a toxic bite. It looks so cute and cuddly. Many people think so too, which is why slow lorises are captured and sold as pets. Sadly, slow lorises do not live long when they are kept as pets. The slow loris is also endangered, which means it's in danger of disappearing forever. I see. So where does the Sunda slow loris come from? Sunda slow lorises live in rainforests in Southeast Asia. They are nocturnal, which means they sleep during the day. During the night, they slowly climb around in trees looking for food, like fruits, plants, insects, and even eggs. The truck you saw earlier could belong to an illegal pet trader or Maybe it was someone from Animal Protection taking the slow loris back to its home. Then we should do that too. This slow loris belongs in the wild. Come and join us. That's a great idea, Leo. See you downstairs. Go down and have a look. There it is. It seems like it's doing okay. Oh no, it's a sun bear. Careful, everybody. We can't make any sudden move. The slow loris is moving too slowly. It'll never get away in time. Oh no, slow loris. Hey. What just happened? The sun bear smelled the toxic saliva on the slow loris's fur. So the sun bear knows that the slow loris is not good to eat. Well, that was close. Now let's get you back to the jeep. We did it! We found a home for the Sunda Slow Loris. Great job, everyone. Hooray! We found a Sunda Slow Loris in our garden. We learned that the Slow Lorises should not be kept as pets, but that they belong in the wild. So we went to the rainforest to find the Sunda Slow Loris a home. 
Good job, children. You did it. You are amazing wildlife rangers. The Indian Peacock. Hi, everybody. My name is Leo. I am a junior ranger. And this is my puppy. Hero, leave that bird alone. <coughs> Be nice, Hero. You're much bigger than that bird. Hey, look. The bird dropped a feather. Feathers are important because they help birds fly, keep them warm, and hide them from predators. You found another feather, Hero. It must be from another bird. Look, it has a different color. Let's see if we can find more feathers. What is it, Hero? You found another feather? Wow, is that a feather? It looks so different from the other feathers. It's so big and it's so colorful. What was that? Wow, it's a big and beautiful bird. I wonder what kind of bird this is. You know what we should do? Let's take a photo and send it to my sister, Katie. She is also a junior ranger. Wow, look at those feathers. Hi, Katie. Did you find anything? Hi, Leo. So, the bird you found is... It's an Indian peacock, also known as a blue peacock. Well, it definitely is blue. And it's called an Indian peacock because it comes from India? That's right. It's usually found in the rainforests of India and Sri Lanka. Peacocks eat seeds, fruits, insects, and even small animals like lizards and snakes. What else did you find out, Katie? Actually, a peacock is a male, like the one you found. And a female is called a peahen. The peacocks, or males, are more colorful and have bigger tail feathers. The peahens, or females, have more dull-looking colors. Both the male and female are called a peafowl. So it's an Indian peafowl. Correct. Not all peafowls are blue, though. Some are born with white feathers. And peafowls are one of the largest flying birds in the world. Such an interesting bird. I don't think it belongs in our garden. We should bring the peacock back to its friends. Come and join us. That's a great idea, Leo. See you downstairs. For lots of fun and lots to learn One, two, off we go For lots of fun and lots to learn With the jeep, we should get there in no time What is it, Hero? Leo, it looks like some big cats are following us They could be jungle cats, Katie It says jungle cats are one of the peacock's predators this means jungle cats hunt peacocks for food. Don't worry, Katie. We're safe in the jeep. Oh, no. It looks like we have a flat tire. Can we change it? There's no time. Those jungle cats are too close. Quick, let's start walking. <laughs> scared the jungle cats away by making itself look big. Good work, Peacock. <coughs> we did it. We found a group of peahens. We found an Indian peacock in our garden. We learned that peacocks are male peafowls. They have big tail feathers to impress the females, which are called peahens. So we went to the rainforest 
and found a group of peahens for the peacock. Good job, children. You did it. You are amazing wildlife rangers. Hola, exploradores juniors. Check out our Spanish channel by clicking the link in the description below. See you there.